All right, thanks for watching. And here's an integral with a really surprising answer because I thought I've seen it all, but then I saw this integral and I didn't see it all. So let's evaluate the integral from zero to pi of e to the two cosine x dx. And first of all, let's use the fact that cosine is even to turn this into one half of the integral from minus pi to pi of e of two cosine of x dx. And now what's beautiful is that this integral will lead us to the wonderful world of complex analysis. So two cosine of x is the same as sum of complex exponentials. So it's one half integral from minus pi to pi of e to the ei x plus e minus ix dx. By the way, I don't think I ever shown you this, but I got a math tattoo recently of Euler's formula. How cool. <laughs> and then let's split this up. So we get one half integral from minus pi to pi of e of e i x and then e e to the minus i x dx. Which is crazy because you might be like, when is e to the e an answer? Well, in this case, as you will see. So now let's keep this first term. That's not a problem. But the second term, let's tailor expand it out. So this is none other than one half of the integral from minus pi to pi of e to the e to the ix and the sum from zero to infinity sum from n from zero to infinity of no. z to the n over n factorial which here is e to the minus ix n over n factorial. So here we just use the fact that e to the z is the sum from n from 0 to infinity of z to the n over n factorial, but with z being e to the minus ix. And since this radius of convergence is infinity, it's perfectly valid. Good. And now, well, we can use laws of exponents. So this becomes one half integral from minus pi to pi of e to the e to the ix, and then sum from n from zero to infinity of e to the minus i and x over n factor. All right. And then what we want to do, we want to put this inside and then we get the following. So then what we get is one half an integral from minus pi to pi sum from n from zero to infinity of I believe e to the e to the i x e i e i o and the e to the mi minus i and x over n factorial dx and now we want to do something that's again kind of illegal but we'll still do it let's interchange the integral and the sum which we can probably do due to the dominated convergence theorem because of this one over n factorial and then we're left with the one half of the sum from zero to infinity of the integral from minus pi to pi of e e to the i x e to the minus i and x over n factorial dx and, which, and the cool thing is, not only does this n factorial come out, but we can also write this integral in an easier way. So this is one half sum from zero to infinity of one over n factorial, the integral from minus pi to pi. And let me write it in this way. So e to the e to the ix, and then e to the, or maybe one over, e to the ix over 
over n or to the n dx. And what makes this so nice is that now we can turn this into a contour integral from complex analysis. And if you're not familiar, just think a bit of a U substitution. So let z be gamma x, so the parametrization of the whole circle here. So e to the i x, where x is from minus pi to pi. So here, we're just taking the unit circle and parametrizing it. Then dz, or gamma prime, is gamma prime of x dx, which is i e to the i x dx, which becomes i z dx. And in particular, dx becomes dz over i z. And using this, we can now transform this whole integral into a much simpler one. Because that was the original integral we started with. And now, using complex analysis, abracadabra, alakazam, we get the following. So, one half sum from zero to infinity of one over n factorial integral over that circle of e to the z, because z was e to the i x, and then one over z to the n, and then we had our dz over i z. Which now we can simplify a little bit, so this i can just come out, so one over half, and then sum from zero to infinity, one over i, n factorial, and then contour integral of e to the z over z to the n plus one, easy. So n plus one comes from z to the n, and this z. And the cool thing is we can now um, evaluate it using residues. So this becomes one half the sum from zero to infinity of one over i, n factorial, two pi i. Now, the only singularity is at z equals zero, so it's two pi i times the residue at z equals zero of e to the z over z to the n plus one. Which, by the way, the i's here cancel out. It's one simplification. And for this, we just use the fact that we have a pool of order n plus 1 here. So there's a nice derivative formula to calculate that residue. So the residue at z equals 0 of e to the z over z to the n plus 1. It's just the 1 over n factorial times the limit as z equals to 0 of dn over dz to the n times z to the n plus 1 e to the z over z to the n plus 1. So now hopefully you can see this, but this is just using the fact that we have a pool at order n plus 1, so you multiply whatever function you have by n plus 1, which here conveniently uh, cancels out. And so what we're left with is the 1 over n factorial times the limit as z goes to 0 of e to the z, but differentiated n times, so it's still the same thing. And then in the end, you're left with 1 over n factorial. So all we need to do is plug this in and then see what we get. So now this is our grand finale. So the integral from 0 to pi of e to the 2 cosine x dx. What did we get so far? That was 1 half times the sum from n from 0 to infinity of 1 over n factorial and then 2 pi times the residue at z equals 0 of e to the z over z to the n plus 1. 
but we just found out that that residue is um, 1 over n factorial. So this becomes 1 half sum from 0 to infinity of 1 over n factorial, 2 pi in our 1 over n factorial. Now the 2's cancel out and the pi comes out. So in the end, what is the answer? This integral is really this magical series, pi times the sum from 0 to infinity, not 1 over n factorial, but 1 over n factorial squared. I mean, where do you ever see the sum of n factorial squared? Which is quite interesting, because in other words, this is pi, and then 1 plus 1 over 1 factorial squared plus 1 over 2 factorial squared, etc. So in other words, if we could somehow write this integral in a closed form, then we have a closed form expression for this infinite series. And by the way, this is not too bad to approximate because this goes to zero really, really fast, at least those terms. So at least for large n, we have a very good approximation of this integral. And lastly, from what I heard, this is also an expression for the Bessel function, which is also a, you know, a nice way to write this as an integral. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.